All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli, with another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. And on today's show, we have the one and only Mr. Kyle Sullivan at Shaggy Von Doom himself. He's going to be joining me for the duration of the show. I uh, wanted him on last week, but uh, life got in the way, so he was not able to do that. So I said as an added bonus, why not join me for the Nine News broadcast? Because you haven't done one of those yet. And everybody needs to see that awesome background that you have. Uh, and you've <laughs> added to the collection. I won't say which jersey you've added to the collection, <laughs> but uh, he is here. And uh, we'll get into a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on with the Avalanche. Uh, clearly since they did not play at all thanks to COVID. So we'll talk about that stuff and then more. But first things first, follow the show on social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram, and send questions, comments, concerns, opinions to Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. All right. <laughs> so when we did our locker room show last week, uh, which comes out on Saturdays now. We were talking about the Avalanche possibly clinching a playoff spot headed into this weekend. It was feasible. It was possible if things had gone their way, if they won their games. And I think a couple of other things had to happen, but they could have clinched a spot. And then we got a third positive test for the Avalanche. And uh, I think the writing was on the wall for... Uh, After a third test, something going to happen, and it did. So um, were you at all surprised after the third test that they kind of canceled for the the time being for the short term? Um, And do you think that this has an effect, a lasting effect on the avalanche? for Because this one right now, hopefully we'll only go until I think Thursday, right? Yeah, I think Thursday. So um, the last one went almost two weeks. So where do you think the team's head is at? How much effect do they, will this have on them? What did you think when you first heard that this was happening again to the Colorado Avalanche? Well, with us already having a COVID shutdown once this season, um, when the first one came out, when it was Bo Byram, um, that one kind of got taken care of in-house because he was still recuperating from the injury. It was still taxi squad. When the second one came out and it was Grubauer, he was on the bench. And I didn't figure the NHL would want to play around, especially with the Vancouver situation going on right now. Um, yeah. I didn't figure they would want another one happening, and especially if the Avalanche had to be shut down for two-plus weeks again, that would send scheduling into just an absolute nightmare so i when i heard a third one i knew it was it was done and from what i hear like you said byram uh, was the first one grubauer was the second uh belmar didn't play their last game because he was apparently having you know uh side effects from getting the vaccine and then i was hearing he is the third guy he is the third guy mm-hmm. to get so so, which is possible. I mean, I know with the with the uh, vaccine, it's not immediate. I think it takes yeah. like two weeks for it to fully get through your system and fully be uh, vaccinated. So it, it's within that time frame. Yeah, I heard he was the third guy. Um, but yeah, this is now. I think, and I think over the weekend they didn't have any. I, okay. I, I heard on Saturday and Sunday there was no new cases on the Avalanche. So things are trending towards. Uh, getting back to play on uh, Thursday, which I believe is against St. Louis. Uh, so it's it's turning in the right direction. But do you feel like whether it's – I think the first one was 12 days. I could be – it was around – I don't think it was quite two weeks. I think it was 12 yeah. days. And the Avalanche came out of that struggling a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. they, they held their heads above water, but they were – they, they were looking really good one game and then looking really bad the next game. And it was just this back and forth – and prior to that pause, they were starting to trend up or they're starting to play very well. And then they get 12 days off and they come back and it took them a little while to get going again. This one could be um, a week, I believe, because I think yeah. went went to, was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Yeah. This was a Friday night game. 
So it could be just about a week. And this is a little bit later in the season too. So, mm-hmm. you know, they have a handful of games. They're playing at the top of their game. Do you think this one hurts them as bad coming out of it as the first one does? Well, I don't know if it hurts us as bad this time because this time we're playing every other day. We were playing at the first COVID shutdown. It was still a semblance of a normal schedule. We had a couple days off and things weren't as uh, a frenetic pace as we're going through right now. So at this point, rest is good. Um, But again, we do have that problem with turning the key and getting going again. So St. Louis is a good one to start against. Yeah, because they're struggling. They've dropped back out. I don't know if that's a good one to start with because they're going to be fighting like heck to get back in because they are uh, now on the outside looking in when it comes to uh, the playoff standings. The Avalanche have uh, now, I don't want to say fallen back because they haven't really really played (laughs) to fall back, but the Golden Knights have caught them. We'll say that. Uh, Vegas has caught them in the standings. Uh, They're both at 64 points. Um, I don't have points percentage in front of me. So, but the Avalanche have um, a game in hand now over the the Golden Knights, and they play each other twice. I think next week. So, mm-hmm. all that stuff will get ironed out. If if the Vancouver Canucks can have as many games canceled as they've had, and the league is bending over backwards to get all of those games in. I'm not concerned that the Avalanche will get these couple games in yeah. somewhere along the line. Um, what about players? Um, I had talked a lot about when they went on their first pause, who it could benefit. And uh, I, I was right about one of them, and that was Ryan Graves. Ryan Graves, since that time, has played a lot better. Hasn't been consistent every single game, but um, he, he's been – really playing extremely well since that first pause. Um, and some guys can use this. They use it as a bye week. You know what I mean? Take another bye week and then really step back and, and look and see uh, things that you're doing wrong. Is there anybody there that can utilize this week off uh, like, say, like like Ryan Graves did the first time around? Anybody that you're looking at that's been struggling a little bit and kind of, kind of hit the, the ice running or hit the ice skating, I think is the term. Uh, when they get back, the two names that stand out, um, Andre Burkowski and um, Brandon Saad. Yeah, that's that's true, man. That's two good ones. Yep, two very good, especially Saad. Yeah, Saad was playing. Saad was having a really good season. I'm not saying that he's not having a good season. He's having a, a good season overall. But you're right. He's uh, been a little bit slow as of late. Uh, Burkowski played a, a, I think his worst game of the season. That last game. He played. He played very bad, um, but he's been he's been up and down as of late. Those are two pretty good picks. What, why do you think? Why do you think those two guys? Uh, Berkey just to sit down and get out of his head. Um, we yeah. talked about it um, last year. We talked about it at points this year. He either gets in his head and shoots too much, doesn't shoot enough, um, tries to overplay, takes himself out of the play. Right now, he is in a. I mean, he's a gong show right now, and he needs to settle down and just get back in with fresh legs and a fresh mind mm-hmm. and start that uh, the contributions again. Because when he's on, he's on. And he's, yeah. I mean, he's competing for that top line at times. Like, he's really good, but he's just got to get out of his head. And Brandon mm-hmm. Saad, likewise, needs to get out of a funk. He's turned invisible, and he needs to uh, he needs to find his game again. And I think in in the the last game, it was actually the first game that Soderberg uh, played, the one and only yep. game Soderberg played. I think they he moved him down to the second line or the third line, sorry, um, and got a goal out of it. So you know, sometimes that works. Sometimes it works, yep. and, you know, because he's not a third line guy. Like you put him on the third line, he should be the best player on yeah. both of those lines. And sometimes you got to do that. If you remember, Bednar did that with Kadri early in the season. Brought him down to the third line. That was about to be the third player I wanted to save the best for last because you know how I feel about Kadri. Yeah, Um, I like him. He's my favorite. I mean, he's been my favorite hockey player for a long time, and now he's got our sweater. So it's Mm. just double down on him. 
but for what two three weeks he's been invisible yeah like yeah i agree he did uh all these new call-ups that we've been having come in have been taking the physical play away from Nazan Kadri. The scoring is being taken from everyone but Kadri. So he really doesn't have a role. He doesn't have – he's not fitting in right now, and he needs to reestablish either the physical play, um, getting in the slot, getting in a goalie's eyes, or at least putting a puck in the back of the net because I can't remember mm-hmm. the last Kadri goal that we had. Well, I – the playoffs are right around the corner. So True. That, that, that that's when Kadri will <laughs> will step it up. He's just waiting for the playoffs to, to he'll either get he'll either start scoring in the playoffs or be suspended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. Um all right, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with uh well Kyle, Kyle just told you who his favorite player was. Um and then we'll talk about his new favorite player. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but <No>. first <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about uh, this uh, this new sponsor we have. They are 1010, and this episode is brought to you by them. It's a capsule collection of diamond rings that are responsibly sourced, limited edition designs at a fair price. 1010 is an exclusive collection of 10 creative styles of diamond rings designed by 10 of the most distinctive designers working today. Rings sure to bring joy into her life. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> uh, using only diamonds responsibly sourced from Botswana, 10 female design masters have each produced a uniquely beautiful ring, ideal for engagement, Mother's Day, or simply a beautiful conversation piece. They're the perfect way to bring a light back into her life. They're available now through Mother's Day only at BlueNile.com. Just search the words 10 by 10. This collection features high quality fine jewelry that will surprise and delight and fairly priced so you can give her something special and truly meaningful. If you are on the hunt for the perfect unique ring she will treasure forever, you're definitely going to want to check this out. They won't be around for long. So find them now by searching the words 10 by 10 only at bluenile.com. All right, so we are... I don't know. A couple weeks past. Well, yeah, it'd be two weeks, I think. No, when when the the trade deadline was last week, right? Wow. Yes, last week. It's only one week, man. It feels like it was so long ago. Um, it's been one week. <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been. Um, so Devin Dubnik has been a Colorado Avalanche for exactly one week, and if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow Kyle on Twitter, if you were on the locker room talk, um, he's not Kyle's favorite player. And understandably, I mean, if you're an Avalanche fan, it, it's going to take some people more time to warm up than, than others. So uh, we talked about this on the locker room, uh, the locker room show. And when we did the locker room show, this was pre- uh, suspension pre you know i say not not pre team co like covid suspension where they are right now not nobody got suspended um we were talking about how you know we because grubauer was going to be on the covid list how we kind of have to turn to him uh we have he's got to be the workhorse for at least the next two weeks sure Jonas johansson will get thrown in there uh, a couple games but over the next two weeks, it was going to have to be Dubnik. That time has gone down now because of COVID. Do you see that as a silver lining? Do you see that as you're happy that, you know, some of these games got taken away from him? Yes. Or <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. uh, you just won't come around to, to Devin Dubnik just yet, will you? No, it's, it, it's the equivalent. <laughs> I, I've mentioned it to you before. It, it's, you wouldn't embrace Matt Dumba in a avalanche sweater. You wouldn't embrace like if we made a move for Stevie Y back in the day, like what would you do? Like it, it'd be weird. Player, though, man. He's a good player though. It would Dude, be weird. It, yeah, it it'd would be, be weird. weird. And he, and I'm not just speaking because he reeks of Minnesota wild. Um, right. He's a chronic whiner and that's, we we just got rid of Duchesne, who also suffered the same problem, and that affected the locker room. 
And we also don't need that coming into our locker room. Uh, I've just never been the biggest Devin Dubnik fan. But when you put on the sweater, we're all on the same team. Right. I said it in the locker room show, I can like him, but I don't have to love him. Like yeah. we're all in this. It's not going to benefit him to tank us. Um, no. He's he's on board yeah. now and he's got to, he's got to get it together. So I agree with you hundred percent on, on the complaining thing. He is, he, he, he is a complainer and it seems like almost every goal that goes in, it's almost like not my fault, you know, <laughs> and he wants to complain about it. I don't, how much of it is, do you, you know, knowing that he's on a team that can, you know, uh, that, that's got his back. And if he gives up a goal, it's not the end of the world. And, and, and playing for, you know, some Minnesota wild teams early on, they were, they were good teams, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's had a lot of good runs with them. Uh, but how much of it is like, at least I have to at least try to get this overturned because I don't know if my team can score and <laughs> absolve me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, true. They, you think he just has I, a different attitude being on a, a, a solid offensive team. I will give them credit there, and I've never thought I'd do this backing up the wild on this point. But like, yeah. they left Devin Nubdick many days out to dry. There were yeah. many teams that they had out there that that was literally the only thing they had was if we can squeak one or two by, we can win because Dubnik's going to stand on his head. Right. So, and he was yeah. doing everything he could to, um, to plead his case to win those games, but here you don't have to do that. Um, right. As long as he could plug in and do what he has to and keep his mouth shut, that's fine. But you said we're returning if everything goes fine from the COVID shutdown against the Blues. I mean, we're fresh off the Bennington Dubnik face wash after Bennington had that meltdown. Uh, yeah. Gated to the shark, Sharks bench and. Yeah. Devin Dubnik and Bennington had words. So let's see if that plays over. This is a rivalry I don't want in an avalanche sweater for the Dubnik story to continue in burgundy and blue. But um, that'll be an interesting storyline when we come out of this, how Dubnik reacts against Bennington. Do you, I mean, because you have no idea what's going to happen uh, you know, after this season and where people sign and who gets – uh, frozen for the Seattle draft. I mean, when it comes to goalie, we know who it's going to be. Um, but do do you think the Avalanche continue this with him beyond this season? I say, what's cracking, Dubnik? <laughs> <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> yeah, you think this is a? a I, th- it, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think they they keep him around. I, they, they have some some good young. Uh, goalies and who knows what's going on with with Francois. I think next year they're ex- expecting Francois to be back in action, full bore. Um, and those you have you have a lot of young goalies in your AHL system who they still believe in. Um, they just need a little bit more seasoning. So um, I kind of equate this to that uh, back a couple of years ago when we went out and got uh, Jean Sebastian Chaguer. Mm-hmm. for that little fill-in role for a while. I mean, he was a problem when we played against him, and then we brought him in, and he was serviceable for the time. Yeah, that's, 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 the, uh, that's how I equate that move, uh, but I don't Good. see him sticking around for long. No, I don't either. Um, and then the other guy we got was Nemeth. Uh, he should – I would assume he'd be back when they come back around, but also Byram. Byram yeah. should be off of – he was close to coming back anyway. Uh, cause he was the first one to go on quarantine. So he, when we come out of this, uh, I think Grubauer probably has another, what, I mean, I don't think he's got, he's got to have less than a week. Yeah. I don't know the exact day, but it's probably early next week when he comes off mm-hmm. or sooner than that. I mean, I don't know, but relatively soon, like after the avalanche come back from this, um, they could have another healthy team. So we were always saying that, yeah, that Grubauer needs uh, some rest. He has gotten it yep. in, in more ways than he wanted to, uh, but he's got it. So what do you think? I mean, are the Avalanche going to come out of this ready to go? And, and just because after this is over, there's only a couple weeks left in the season. And we are in playoff time. Yeah, they, They're going to be good I, to go for that. This would be one that uh, first game back you put in Dubnik. Let him, let him sell it off like 
All right, you want to stick around? This is your game. Next yeah. game, JoJo. Next game, Bauer. You think uh, Johansson's going to get some games in the we playoffs? Got, I mean, he uh, in the playoff. Yeah, he 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 might be our Hutchinson. I had, well, that's going to be his his role. But uh, the way he's played, I have more confidence in him than I do with Hutchinson. And I have honestly, right now, before we made the trade, I have more faith in JoJo than I did Nick, and that's personal vitriol aside. <laughs> like JoJo was playing good, and the team was rallying around him, and oh, he yeah. was making really good saves. And he was, I mean, if you just look at his record compared to what it was in Buffalo, he's doing incredible. He's doing very well, he's and very, very maybe well. this could be a spot that he could come in and really flourish. He might not stick around. He might go get overpaid somewhere else because that's what happens to goalies these days. But, yep. I mean, use them while we have them. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's take uh, another break to hear from our sponsors for today. And then we're going to be talking about uh, Jared Bednar once again. And Jared Bednar getting the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the verge of breaking an avalanche record and just going to get postponed for about a week. So, uh, but first we're going to hear from built bar and you know, built bar is the best tasting protein bar <clears throat> on the market. 18 great flavors like caramel, brownie cookies and cream, coconut, almond, peanut butter. What, like, what do you like Kyle? Do you have, do you, I'm a peanut butter fanatic. Are you like, yeah, a I'm, a, I'm a peanut or? butter freak. Are you? Okay. Yeah. So they have, what are that peanut butter brownie, regular peanut butter. They come out with like special edition ones all the time. Sometimes there are peanut butter ones in there too, but mm. 18 great flavors to choose from. Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. They are soft and easy to chew, lose or maintain weight while indulging in a delicious treat. Bars are low calorie, low sugar, high protein and high fiber. Great for the keto diet. Most bars contain 19 grams of protein, 180 calories, five grams of sugar, five grams of net carbs. And go to BuiltBar.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off of your next order. That promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Also brought to you by BetOnline.ag. It is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. With NASCAR, uh, do you bet on NASCAR? Are you a NASCAR guy? I'm a big NASCAR guy. I mean, well... You yeah. kind of have to be where you are, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you bet on NASCAR? Is it just first, second, third? Like, what, what, what is the betting yeah. on, on? That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. You you, okay. uh, you pick your winners. You ride the hot hand. Yeah. That's all you do. It's, it's cut and dry. It's not like there's a spread or anything like that in NASCAR. It's basically like Greyhound racing, but with cars. Great. <laughs> For all you uh, animal lovers out there. Uh <laughs> Yeah, bet on NASCAR if you want. I don't think you can bet on the Greyhounds on Bet Online. I don't know, but uh, even NHL, NBA, Major League Baseball, all those sports are in full swing. Bet Online even covers award shows. The what was, it's on right as we're recording this. The, the Country Music Awards are on right now. Sorry, and I don't listen to country, so I, I, I couldn't tell you who's who. But Just you can bet I live on here. That. Doesn't mean I have to listen to it. <laughs> Or you could have bet on it because by the time you're watching this or listening to it, it's over. Uh, sure. You can you can bet on future award shows, TV shows, reality TV, uh, real time updated odds and props on almost anything that you can imagine. Bet online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website or use the mobile device, and when you sign up, you will receive a fifty percent welcome bonus with your first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Okay. Again, so like I said in the beginning, we were heading into this weekend, and if things went the avalanche way, could have locked up a playoff spot. We we know that's going to happen or just delaying the inevitable. And another thing that is uh the inevitable being delayed is Jared Bednar coaching the most games in avalanche history right now he is tied with bob hartley and he was expected to take that over uh on friday and because of that did not happen and now he's just gonna have to wait it out for another week or so um i did a a segment on i think it was on friday show uh kind of talking about assuming he was going to get that record that day and he didn't so uh but whatever um 
I just feel like this guy does not get enough credit because of the talent that's on this team. And when you have, it's just the way sports are today. When you have talent like the Avalanche have, uh, the coach gets recognition, but it's like, well, the guys on the court or the guys on the ice or the guys in the field are doing the work. And I'm not denying that aspect at all. I think this entire thing that the Avalanche have going right now is a well-oiled machine. And it is as much Jared Bednar's doing as guys like Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen and Kale McCarr. Yeah. Do you disagree with that? No, not at all. Uh, fun fact, back before COVID, I wrote an article about Je- Jared Bednar for Mile High Sticking. Uh, mm-hmm. talking about how he's quietly working his way up. Um, I have have nothing but respect for Bednar. Um, handpicked from Joe Sackick. I mean, he was the AHL coach for Columbus before he came over here. Nobody knew about Jared Bednar. Now everybody respects him. And mm-hmm. he he's not a over-the-top personality. He's not your typical old-school hockey guy. He's a, He's a player's coach, but he's... He's driven. He knows what he's doing. He he has the game plan in his mind. He doesn't overcoach. If the players are feeling something, he'll let them ride. Right. Yeah. Bednar is as much as the Avalanche as Nathan McKinnon, Landis Gog, and Grubauer, Kale McCarr. Bednar is the heart and soul of this team. I agree, man. I really agree, and I, I it kind of it kills me that he doesn't get you know the the recognition across the league um as he should you know people notice what's going on in colorado um but do do you think that this is a guy and i don't want to like i I hate looking ahead and saying like the whole what if game but let's let's play it um the avalanche are set up to win let's Mm -hmm. not kid ourselves you know what i mean like they are it's that's not a secret to anybody and they are set up to win for years to come yes if things don't go the way that they want them to go in terms of you know winning cups do you feel like like joe sackick would make a a move there and almost like well he you know maybe if we you know we need a different mentality to get over that hump or do you think he is pretty comfortable even if the avalanche because you know winning a stanley cup is not easy (laughs) No. Everybody thinks just because we have the best team, uh, we can just win cups left and right. So, uh, you know, he will be a reason why if they do. And would he be a reason why if they don't? I don't see him being um, a reason why they don't. I don't mm-hmm. see him becoming a liability. And, I mean, I think we have a little bit too much fondness for Crawford and uh, Hartley. Looking back, if you look, they didn't stay that long. No. Uh, it was either they completely tanked or they went for greener pastures. Bednar right. sold out for this team. Um, that's one of those things I'm, you mentioned you're disappointed he doesn't get the recognition he needs. I'm glad he doesn't because yeah, I'm glad it, 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 every it. time somebody gets fired in New Jersey or Calgary that his name isn't circulating and that throws the team off. Right. I'm glad nobody knows about Bednar right now. Well, once we win the cup, let him talk. Everyone will know, right? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's, I think he's one of those guys that could have tenure for a long period of time. He, he really, really could. And and if he wins a, a couple Stanley Cups in these next few years, it, it'll almost be like, uh, you know, here's a blank check, and not even a blank check. It's just like here's a, a blank piece of paper. And, you know, there's an infinity sign on it and you can basically stay here as long as you want to, you know, like it's, it just, it just feels like that kind of relationship because like what you said, he was handpicked by Sackick and he came in, he took over a team that was historically bad. So Mm -hmm. he could have said like, I want my first shot in the NHL, but I don't want it to be with that team because they are, they are at rock bottom and he took it on. And I think Joe Sackick respects that. Mm-hmm. And like his only two fireable offenses is not being able to call timeouts and the five on three. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah. And the overtimes. For some reason, the Avalanche and overtime are, are, are not. I don't have a lot of. Con- this year's a little bit better, 
But well, last year, holy crap. It's what happens when you have such a good team. You don't plan for uh, going to overtime. You I plan know. on getting yeah. business done and going on to the next game. Yeah, I agree. Yep. So I know it, it's just everything is 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 great in Colorado Avalanche world right now, um, with the exception of this COVID. So let's get yep. that out of the way, and we got playoff hockey right around the corner. So, um, all right, that'll do it for today. So why don't you tell people where they can find you? on the social media world. You can find me at Shaggy Von Doom on Twitter yeah. and Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same one for Instagram too, right? Yes, it is. All right. Well, thank you for coming on, sir. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, thank you to everybody out there in Colorado Avalanche land for tuning in. A, another week's worth of shows coming at you. Hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have some Avalanche hockey. But until then uh tune in every day and anything new that's uh going on in avalanche world with this thing we'll definitely talk about it and follow me on uh, twitter because it'll be going up there as well and instagram so that is it what's that one is that the bulls I'm po- no i'm pointing at your is name me oh my name okay <laughs> you're pointing at the jersey behind it <laughs> that is the bulls though right isn't that, yeah, the, that is the, the birmingham, bulls? Birmingham bulls yes love it so, all right guys <laughs>